This is part two of lecture one. In this part, we're going to be talking about what is social psychology. But before I go to definitions, let me start by asking you a question. What are, according to you, the biggest problems that modern society are facing? So if you just take a moment for yourself to think about this, what is really something that disturbs you, something that you worry about if you think about the society or the world that we live in? Well, one thing that will probably come to mind is the world and the state of nature in the world. Of course, climate change is a very big problem that we're all uh, facing with. And we, we realize every summer when it gets hotter, uh, that this is something that's, that's going to change our lives. And it already did change our lives. And it's going to be something that will become a reality even more so over the upcoming years. So um, a question that you might be having when it comes to climate change is, why do we behave in ways that are actually damaging to us in the long run? Why is it so hard for people to, for example, um, show behavior that they know is better for the world? Taking shorter showers, taking the bike instead of going by car. All these tiny behaviors that will eventually make a difference in making an impact on the world. But it's really hard for people to behave in ways that is good in the long term. We are very short-minded. We think about what is nice for us right now. And it's really hard to sort of transform our behavior to show uh, behavior that is good in the long run, not only for us, but also for the world that we live in. And social psychology can help us understand these behaviors, can help us understand why climate change has gone so far in the, in the first place. And also, it can help us answer a question that is on the mind of politicians for a long time. How can we stop this? And is there a way of changing people's behavior? The short answer is yes. There, is, there are certain ways, certain uh, strategies that we can use to impact people's behavior. And we'll be di discussing them throughout this course. Let's now move on to another problem, something very different, but definitely not more urgent or important. That is the way we treat each other. How is it, why is it, that people get treated differently based on their appearance? This is an ancient old question. We treat people differently when they look different from us. And this leads to very negative intersocial situations and very negative behaviors, such as stereotyping, discrimination, and sometimes it goes even so far that lives are on the line, like what happens uh, here um, uh, in the United States. Another question, something that has been very relevant for us in the last couple of years, is why is it so hard for people to follow rules that are essential for human health? Uh, if you're dealing with a pandemic in which it's very clear what we need to do to sort of tackle this and make sure that we stay safe. People find it very hard to change their habits, to change the way they behave on a day-to-day -day basis, to keep distance from people that they love. That's really, really difficult. Why is that the case? Why is it so hard to follow very basic rules, rules that make a lot of sense if you know what's going on? Then a final topic that you might be thinking about when you talk about and you think about deep problems in society is the discussion uh, surrounding safety when it comes to uh, interpersonal situations like uh, the Me Too movement. In the Me Too movement, it became very clear that there's some deep-rooted sexism in behaviors, uh, often between um, people in power, often men in power, and uh, people that do not have power. And it's very hard for victims in these situations to speak up. And uh, there's many examples of this. For example, also here in the Netherlands, uh, there was uh, uh, a lot of uh, um, bad media press outlet on uh, situations on a very popular TV show uh, called The Voice of Holland, uh, an international format that's also uh, broadcasted here in the Netherlands, uh, where uh, people in power, uh, judges of the program, coaches of the program, actually got involved in, um, in Me Too uh, uh, behaviors. And um, finally, victims spoke up. They talked about what they went through, but it was very hard and it was hidden for years. So why is that? Why is it so hard for victims to speak up? So all these different, very complicated issues, um, we can understand them just a little bit better if we understand human behavior. 
So this is if you think about what's going on in the world around us and things that, that might be upsetting to you when you read the newspaper. But also in your own life, you probably also had some situations that really impacted you. Um, maybe situations that resemble uh, the, the uh, problems that we discussed before, something that had to do with power abuse or a discrimination. But it might also be something really different. Maybe in the past, or maybe still, you experience situations in which you feel bullied or excluded by other people. Why f does it feel so bad to be excluded by people? Uh, especially when you're part of a certain group and all of a sudden you're not part of that group anymore. You're ignored and people talk bad about you or they laugh in your face or behind your back even. That's really hurtful. It can really be a traumatizing experience. Why is that? Even if it's not physical, you're not physically assaulted, it's just something psychological. But why does it feel so bad to be excluded? Something uh, that's more on the positive side, and of course a special interest to me, a question uh, that uh, also researchers has been, have been studying uh, for, for decades is why do we fall in love? This is of course very different from the other topics, but falling in love and, and forming relationships is also very impactful in your life. And the way you are treated in an interpersonal relationship, especially in a romantic relationship, will also leave its mark. So if you had a good partner, this, this is great uh, for developing healthy relationships, even further, even besides that, that one partner. And if you get treated badly, this also leaves its mark, and it may, makes, you, makes it harder for you to trust people. So why do we fall in love, and how do relationships impact us and our personality and the relationships we'll form in the future? So um, all these questions are just for you to get a sense of how psychology, social psychology matters. Because if you have insight into social psychology, you will have insight into answering this, this very deep and complicated questions. So let me now go to some definitions. First of all, let me start with a de definition of psychology, the study that you're all studying. So psychology, that's no surprise to you, that's a scientific study of the mind. And with mind, I mean thoughts and feelings and the behavior of people. And that's very broad, of course. Social psychology sort of focuses on a specific aspect of psychology, and that is that in social psychology, you zoom into the way in which people's thoughts and feelings and behaviors are impacted by others. So other people around us influence our minds and our behavior. So this happens, for example, when you're together with a group of friends. Maybe you're studying or you're just catching up. All these people impact you. So the personalities of each of these individuals in the group impact how you behave. Their behavior is going to impact how you behave. If everybody's very loud and talking a lot and, and being ex extroverted, you can either uh, be, show uh, uh, behavior that is the same and, and you feel like you're imitating the behavior of the, gr of the group, or you maybe even uh, uh, behave completely different because you want to shy away and you feel sort of intimidated by the group. Nevertheless, even if you're imitating the others or you're showing behavior that's different, um, they are impacting your behavior. So the group that you're in, the people that are around you in your near presence, they impact your behavior. But not only the people that are actually there, also people that are not actually there, that are in your minds, they also impact you. So for example, maybe this guy on the very right is all of a sudden realizing that it's actually his mother's birthday today. So he's thinking about his mother while he's being in that group. And thinking about her will also consequently impact his behavior. So people do not have to be physically present to impact your behavior. So people are influenced by both the real presence of others. This is what we as social psychologists refer to as the explicit presence of other, others and also the imagined presence of others. So that's the implicit pres reference, presence of others. And uh, one of the, the core um, uh, themes within social psychology is social influence. And that is the way, the effect that basically all the behavior of other people, the words, the actions, the mere presence of other people have on our own thoughts, feelings and behavior. So how are uh, people impacting us? And we'll have plenty of examples throughout this course of uh, the way that we're impacted by uh, other people. 
So if you want to study uh, the mind, if you want to understand humans better, uh, then you can take different approaches. So clinical psychology and personality psychology, for, for these psychologists, the level of analysis is the individual. They are interested in, for example, individual differences between personality that sets one person aside from uh, the other. For social psychologists, the level of analysis is the individual in the context of a social situation. So we never focus on an individual uh, on its own, like it's, it's, uh, like it's in a bubble. We also don't think that makes a lot of sense because humans are group animals. We always uh, have uh, others in our surroundings and even if we're not physically with others, they are impacting us through their implicit presence. So the individual in the social context, that's the field of social psychology. And what social psychologists try to do is to get a sense of the individual's construal of a social situation. And with construal, I mean, how do humans perceive, comprehend, and interpret their social worlds? What type of constructs do they use? How do they make sense of the social world that they are living in? And uh, this will be a returning topic in many of the upcoming lectures.